what's up? Welcome to this YouTube channel. My name is Tobias. I am a lawyer, but I occasionally make videos about EDC gear, tech, cameras, and all of the stuff that I'm interested in. And to this day, one of my most viewed videos is actually about the GORUCK Raka 2.0, one of the first videos I've ever made about my everyday carry setup with this backpack. Even though I have tried many backpacks over the past few years, the Raka has always been my gold standard in terms of durability and carrying comfort. I still use it to this day, mostly for hiking though and not as much as a daily carry, but it still looks almost brand new. It is by now four years old though and it has most certainly stood the test of time for me. It's also still the most comfortable backpack that I've ever owned, with the Rucksack by Nutsack and the Able Carry Daily Carry both coming in at a close second, but the Gorak is still better. It sits high up and tight on your back, it almost feels like it's grabbing you and holding you upright like an exoskeleton. And I know how ridiculous this might sound, but it is sometimes actually more comfortable to carry the Gorak than not to carry it on your back. It is that good to your back. But with all that praise out of the way, the Gorak Raka is not perfect, that is mainly for two reasons. First of all, it doesn't have a laptop compartment and secondly, it looks kind of tactical. It does have that tactical aesthetic and don't get me wrong, I like that, but it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the clothing that I wear as a lawyer on most day-to-day -day occasions. I always loved the Rucksack by Nutsack since I got it for many reasons actually, but probably mostly because of its choice of materials. With its thick waxed canvas and those sweet sweet leather accents and the heavy duty leather bottom. The Raka not having a laptop compartment should obviously not be a surprise to me, that is kind of the point of the Raka. It's basically a GR1 which does have a separate laptop compartment and the Raka is the same backpack just without that rear laptop compartment. It does still have a pouch inside the main compartment that can be used to store your laptop but it's a bit more cumbersome. So you know maybe I should have just gotten the GR1 in the first place and not the Raka but I'm kind of glad that I didn't because that now gave me the perfect excuse to go out and spend the $400 plus shipping fees plus import fees plus taxes which came out to I don't know over 500 euros overall um, to buy this new GR1 Heritage backpack. This now is a full-fledged Gorak GR1, but made out of more traditional materials like wax canvas and leather. So this should be the perfect backpack for me, right? I have used this backpack for over two months now, so let's talk about whether or not it was the right choice to spend that amount of money on this backpack. And as always, if you're only interested in any specific part of this review, feel free to use the timestamps in the description below. No hard feelings, but let's get into it. So obviously the key difference between this GR1 and any other GR1 is the slightly modified design and the more traditional choice of materials. And if you ask me, it is absolutely beautiful. I would probably honestly even go so far as to say that this is the best looking backpack that I know of. They have removed all of the molly webbing that you would find on a regular GR1, which makes for a sleeker and less tactical appearance. The waxed canvas had that typical slightly moist feeling to it when I first took it out of the box, but it has worn off quite nicely. The leather accents and details are just on point and of the highest quality, but still it's not too in your face and not over the top. They didn't just slap leather all over the backpack to make a statement, but they reinforced the handle and especially the bottom with beautiful red wing leather. I also particularly like the look of these two straps of leather reinforcement on the back side. I don't know how much they are really needed there and nobody will ever see them while you are wearing the backpack, but it's just such a beautiful little detail that always makes me happy when I see it. In terms of the color, there's actually a choice of four different colors with the GR1 Heritage. I obviously went for the green one and I'm very happy with this deep and rich green. It says olive on their website, but it looks much more like a deep pine green to me. But whatever, it looks great, that's all you need to know. Since this is wax canvas, it will however form a patina over time and most likely look a lot more washed out and lose its color as it ages. This is actually kind of sad, but also certainly part of its charm and I always like a good patina. So if you like to keep your gear in mint condition, this is certainly not the backpack for you because you will start to see scratches on this backpack and especially on the leather bottom from the first time you set it on the ground onwards. So again, I do enjoy a good patina, but it's not for everyone. Also, even aside from that, it's not all perfect because the wax leather material 
feels actually kind of thin in my opinion. I've actually seen people on YouTube complain about the material being see-through, especially on the brighter color waves like the tan color. Haven't had this issue on this green one, but still the material certainly doesn't feel as thick as the regular G1000 does. And to be completely honest with you, I also do not think that it is as rugged. On top of that, because of the slightly thinner material, objects that are inside of the backpack have more of a tendency to sort of poke out of it. They obviously don't go through the material, but if my water bottle tilts slightly to the side, it will show a mark on this backpack that also does give the backpack a somewhat more loose feeling overall. And I really do just hope that this backpack will not lose all of its form and shape over time. That hasn't happened yet though, and it also was never a problem with the G1000 Gorak. So overall, to complete this segment, it is a very nice looking, beautiful backpack made out of high quality materials. In terms of comfort and functionality, I'm happy to report that the Gorak GR1 Heritage is actually just as comfortable as the Gorak Raka 2.0 that I used up until recently. The shoulder pads on the Raka feel a bit stiffer and certainly had a longer break-in period than the shoulder pads on the GR1. This GR1 Heritage was pretty much ready to go right out of the box. So in short, this is on par with if not more comfortable than the most comfortable backpack that I've ever tried. And let me tell you, I've tried a metric fuck ton of backpacks over the past few years. In terms of functionality, it is very similar to the Raka and pretty much just what you would expect from a GR1, but with a few additions. But since not everybody owns a GR1 or knows the GR1 that well, let me just quickly take you through the features of this backpack. And don't worry, we will get into how I have set this backpack up as my EDC bag in just a minute. The GR1 is available in a 20 and a 26 liter variant with this being the smaller one. I rarely ever feel like this 21 liter version is too small for my daily carry stuff or even for a day hike. And if I do, it's mostly because I want to be able to keep multiple jackets and layers of clothing in my backpack. Especially in spring and fall, when mother nature has rapid mood swings and the weather changes on an hourly basis. But if that's the case, I honestly prefer to carry the nutsack by rucksack, since the top loader is just easier to use when it comes to quickly putting away your jackets. So going with the 21 liter was the right choice for me. The GR1 consists of a main compartment with a fully opening clamshell design, huge YKK zippers and a stretchy pouch on the inside, a small flat zippered pocket and a bigger mesh pocket on the inside of that front lid, another big flat pocket on the outside for easy access with a nice flap to protect the zipper from any rain. And there is obviously also that laptop compartment behind the shoulder straps. As a bonus, you also get this neat little quick access pocket up on top right below the handle. It's big enough to house some of your daily essentials like your keys and sunglasses and it's honestly a great addition to this backpack to make use of that space right up on top. The laptop compartment is a bit cumbersome because it can't be accessed without folding the shoulder straps out of the way first and it is also just barely big enough to house my M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro. Also, be aware that there is no lining on the inside of this compartment, so you might get some of that wax finish on your laptop the first couple of times you use it. Wasn't a major issue for me though. Other than that, I feel like it's holding my MacBook Pro securely and it's pretty much impossible to access for thieves. With this M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro taking up basically all of the back panel, the backpack does however get rather stiff and slightly uncomfortable over longer periods of time. That is an issue that I don't get with the rucksack, but that is also a 25 liter backpack, not a 21 liter backpack, so it is slightly bigger and you might not get that issue when you go for the 26 liter Gorak GR1 Heritage instead of the 21 liter version that I got. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into how I set this guy up as my daily carry backpack. And let's start with the pockets on the outside and work our way inwards. As I said, I sometimes carry my MacBook Pro with me, but that honestly doesn't happen all that often. I like to use my MacBook around the apartment a lot and occasionally take it with me, but it's not a true daily carrying item for me right now. What I do like to take with me instead is the lovely 11 inch iPad Pro with the Apple keyboard and pen. It's one of my favorite tech products of all times and by now almost four years old, but still holding up great. It's more than enough for me on most days and with it being as small and lightweight as it is, I honestly barely even feel it on my back. In the front pocket on the other side of the backpack is where I like to keep a foldable tote bag for those unexpected trips to the grocery store or the local farmer's market. 
comes in handy all the time and I hate buying those paper or plastic bags. This particular tote bag is Leica branded, but any old cloth bag would do. I keep my sunglasses in the new top compartment and that's it for the pockets on the outside of this backpack. So let's open up those huge YKK zippers and start with the pockets on the inside of the lid. I keep some paper tissues and my AirPods Pros in the small zippered pocket on top and an A5 sized moleskin notebook as well as a leather case for my favorite brass pen by Caveco inside of the mesh pocket. Since the main compartment can be accessed via this huge clamshell opening, I have the benefit of organizing everything neatly in a Tetris style fashion, but also I can use that zipper that goes all around the backpack as a side access to just quickly get to one specific item that I want to take out without taking all of the things out of my backpack first. That makes life easy and gives me tons of ways to make good use of the space. I keep a Maxpedition skinny pouch on the bottom of this backpack at all times. Regular viewers are probably sick to death of seeing this by now, but this guy contains all of the items that I might desperately need in a pinch, but don't actually want to have to use. Stuff like a decent power bank in case my phone's battery runs out, painkillers, anti-diarrhea pills, a decent multi-tool to take care of stuff that might have gotten loose on my bike or motorcycle and a ton of other stuff. I made a full video about this pouch over a year ago, so go check it out if you would like to get a full tour. For now though, let's continue with yet another Maxpedition pouch that I got in here, which is called the Micro and it contains an assortment of spare batteries for different cameras, a USB-C hub and my 1TB SanDisk SSD. On top of the Maxpedition pouches, I keep the camera insert of the Billingham Small Hadley Pro bag. This allows me to carry and access some of my camera gear just by slinging the backpack over my shoulder and opening up the zipper on the side. Just like I would do on an actual camera backpack. I do also actually have a real camera backpack. Currently that is the Element backpack by Companion. But that backpack is a lot bigger and can house a lot more stuff. So it's pretty much just reserved for those occasions when I want to bring all of my gear. This camera insert simply allows me to carry my Laka Q2 with this beautiful leather strap for taking photos and my Sony ZV-1 for more on-the-go video focused stuff. I have occasionally also carried the Fujifilm X-T4 with the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 lens in here instead of the ZV-1 but even though that combo is a lot more capable it is obviously also a lot heavier so it's not my preferred choice for my day-to-day -day setup. With that being said, if I do go out with the specific goal of getting any shots for maybe a YouTube video or whatever, having the option to bring the X-T4 alongside my Q2 is pretty nice. I also like to keep an insulated water bottle by Clean Canteen in here, as well as a rollable backgammon set by the company Sondergut. Because it's always nice to play some backgammon while you're in a cafe or restaurant or just in a park. Occasionally, I also throw the PGY Tech Mantis Pod Pro in there. It's a wonderful little tripod, but I only bring it with me if I'm actually planning to use it, which honestly doesn't happen too often. Even with all of this stuff in here, there's still plenty of room to stow a jacket up on top or maybe one of our little stuff towels. These towels are just the best all-purpose blankets. My girlfriend likes to use them as a blanket for when it gets a bit chilly, when you're sitting outside in a cafe or a restaurant, on those early summer evenings. And they are also big enough to be used as a full-sized beach towel. But anyway, I digress. There's also always the option to fold your jacket flat and lay it on top of all of your other stuff, which in turn frees up more space that you can utilize for other daily items like a lunchbox or you could throw a small first aid kit in here if you want to go hiking or mountain biking or you know, whatever, go crazy. So in conclusion, I think it's no surprise that I'm very happy with the Gorak GR1 Heritage. The only thing that I would actually like to see changed is the use of a slightly thicker wax canvas material, just to make it feel a bit more sturdy overall. It's by no means bad though, but yeah, that is pretty much the only negative point I've discovered so far. I personally do love the color and the overall aesthetic, the many ways I can organize this backpack and just how comfortable it is on my back. This and the Rucksack by Nutsack are right now my two favorite backpacks when it comes to daily carrying backpacks. But anyway, let me know what you think about the GORUCK GR1 in the comments down below. If you have any questions, you can also feel free to just drop them there. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. New videos coming soon. Until then, take good care. Bye bye.